So I'm recording this video to tell you about my upcoming project, The Astronomy and Astrology of 2012. I'm, I've been speaking out about this quite a bit and lecturing, talking about it in different formats, and I'm making a quick video to explain to you what it is. Now, you might ask yourself, why do you need to learn this? Why is this important? You know, the reason this is important is because the unprecedented global shifts that are happening right now, everything from the banking crises to the, the global economy and the effects that we're seeing to the global climate change, all kinds of shifts that are happening are real and they were predicted and known about th thousands and thousands of years ago very accurately and what's uh, the reason these things are happening can be seen in the sky and um, this is what I discuss. It's, it's about the astronomy and the astrology you know, there was a time when astronomy and astrology were really seen as the same thing, and we're so disconnected from astronomy now even. Is it any wonder we're so disconnected from the astrology? So I'm going to really talk about the Earth we live on and its motion going around the sun and all of these things that happen every day. Every day of our life is created by these things. It's not just some, oh yeah, there's that going on too. No, that's really the big big source and start of everything. Everything begins from that. And so we talk about that and then how that's in relationship to our galaxy and the cycles of time. That's, the, that's sort of an overall um, explanation. And so, um, you know, the reason this is important and how it works and all of those things will be talked about. And we'll answer questions like, how did life on Earth get here? Where are we going? What are the deeper secrets behind 2012 and the unprecedented changes happening now? Are we heading toward doomsday? What's the result of this? Where are we heading? Important stuff. So as I say, we talk about the Earth, its relationship to the Sun, the Sun and the Earth, the sacred number 108. Very important. We will talk about the um, moon and its relationship also the sun, uh, to the earth and the sacred number 108. It's very important. It also shows things like prayers, prayer beads, and it's a, it's a very important and powerful, it's very important and powerful connection that we have with nature is through 108. And then you see how these things, the sun and the moon, influence things like the Hindu deities, why they look the way they do what the symbolism is there, why they use deities at all, how to approach these things, why they're used as devices. See, uh, in many ways, the Mayan culture, we don't have a lot of their mythology still intact. So we can still see, though, when we look back into like the ancient Indians, the ancient um, people, you know, their culture is still intact. So we can see the same sort of energy that was referred to by the Mayans, was also referred to by the Vedic people. So we're going to look at the interconnectedness there. And then so this is some of the astronomy, the annual planetary alignments, the galactic plane, and our solar system, and how these things are lined up. It looks confusing, but it's not. I'll explain it to you. It's explained, and you understand this is really what's happening and why it's unprecedented now. This is another approach to it. These are actual class diagrams that I use. You see this is um, a different way to look at the zodiac. This is the sidereal nakshatra is what they're called, um, and the western zodiac signs. So you're, you'll, you'll hear about a very interesting interrelationship between both zodiacs, and then we'll talk about actual astrological things that have happened. This is the eclipse that just happened this year, July 2009. Also, there's a big eclipse in 2011. I talk about that and many other things like the outer planets of Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto, things like that. Important stuff, very important things that will be talked about. So you want to check this out, and if you do, you're going to learn a lot about the world you live in, why things are happening the way they are, where they're going from here, and you'll get a lot of inspiration and feel uplifted by it all. We're not heading toward doomsday, but there's big things happening, and you want to know why. This is for your benefit. This will be good for you. You want to know this, so check it out.
I could explain this, but I can make a diagram and make it easier. I want to show something here that um, we have the Earth here, let's say. This is the Earth. And this is not going to be the scale, obviously. Let's say this is the moon. Okay? The diameter of the moon, this is the this is the formula. The diameter of the moon and the length to the earth would be diameter equals 108 the size. If you take the diameter of the earth, the distance is 108 the diameter. Same is true with the sun. The diameter of the sun, you can fit 108 suns between us and the, between the sun and the earth. You fit 108 moons between us and the moon. Scalability and distance. This is the ratio between scale and distance is 108. This is the main reason. Oh, I forgot to bring my prop. My broken mala that I was going to bring and show. <laughs> here is why I can show you the mala beads. Mala beads here. You want to know why? We use mala beads and they have 108 beads. And you go around once and you flip it and you go around this way. That's the way you do it, right? This takes you to the sun <laughs> and this takes you to the moon. 108. You go right there and you go right there. So this is the main reason why 108 is a sacred number. Hmm. Because 108, the number itself, just represents this ratio of energetic um, power that is the real creative matrix here on Earth. You know the story of the, what was it, was it the three bears? This <laughs> one's too cold, this one's too hot, this one's just right. Okay, Venus, it's too hot. Mars, it's too cold. But this place is just right. 108, the ratio, the scale between size and distance is what creates this, this harmonious vibration on Earth and gave rise to all these creatures. And it didn't happen overnight. You know how old the Earth is? And the sun? 1.5 billion. Now, we, have these, we use these numbers to say million, billion, and yeah, it's all the same. It's not. Billion is a big number. It's a bunch of zeros. 4.5 billion years, we didn't have a multi-celled organism on Earth until 2 billion. It took 2 billion years to make a multi-celled organism. Half the life of the planet and the sun, it took 2 billion years to make a multi-celled organism. A single-celled organism happened in 1 billion Another billion years, we had a multicellular organism, which means two cells that get together and start doing something other than just swimming somewhere as a microbe. <laughs> One billion years to make a single cell, two billion years to make a double or a multicell organism. Then we start getting into um, other types of fungus and things when they when these multicell organisms start doing stuff. Then we get into uh, reptiles and all this other stuff. Human beings come at about 50,000 years. So if you want to look at the scalability of the age of the Earth and the Sun and the existence of human beings, the sort of ratio is if the, if the length of time that the Sun and